All right, let's continue on looking at the phyla of animals here, the different phyla of animals. So next are segmented worms, also known as annelids. So these are earthworms and marine worms and leeches. Uh, so uh, these guys, so uh, this earthworm, leech, this is a, uh, um, uh, a polychaete, also known as a, uh, a marine worm here. So uh, these guys are coelomates uh, and they're also protostomes. They are segmented and they are bilaterally symmetrical. You can see the segments on them, all right? Um, they are found in marine, freshwater, and terrestrial uh, environments as well as being parasitic, which is what the leeches are. So this is shown, you know, just some of the anatomy of, a, a, of an earthworm. Uh, once again, Australia has everything horrible on this planet. You can see the size of the earthworms that are found down there. Uh, this is showing another one of these polychaetes or marine worms. You can see those segments on the sides there. Uh, this is another uh, marine worm. This is called a feather duster. Uh, and they're filter feeders and they have these uh, extensions out uh, which they come bring back in and they filter those. Uh, a lot of times these guys are called feather dusters because of their appearance there. All right, so there's a leech, right? All right, so let's move on to mollusks. Mollusks are snails, clams, um, octopuses, and squids. So uh, some of these guys are what we call gastropods. Gastropods are snails and slugs and nudibranchs. Uh, and this is a nudibranch, uh, it's a, also known as a sea slug. So that's one group. Uh, next are the, uh, so, uh, next are the bivalve mollusks. So the bivalve mollusks include the clams, and scallops, oysters, and mussels. Lastly are the cephalopods. So the cephalopods are the squids. Uh, uh, so if we go to, let's go to the, so here's showing a nudibranch, they're showing a, a snail, here's a clam. Uh, so this is looking at the groups of cephalopods here. Uh, we have uh, squids, which have eight short tentacles and two long, so 10 tentacles there, all right. Octopuses uh, have eight tentacles. Uh, Nautilus have many uh, uh, tentacles. Um, so uh, these guys have little chambers in here, which helps keep them buoyant in the water column. Oh, by the way, do you guys know how many times you have to tickle a squid to get it to laugh? 10 tickles, tentacles. Right, okay, so these guys, uh, uh, these guys are coelomates and protostomes. So let's go back to this uh, picture up here. So um, uh, they have a body in three parts. Uh, so they have what is known as a head foot. The head foot on a snail is what kind of sticks out there. All right. Uh, they have a visceral mass, which is inside of there. And then they have a mantle, which is this membrane, essentially, uh, which some of them can have a shell off of. Not all of them have that shell. But they all have this, uh, what is known as a radula. It's this rasping tongue there. Um, so as I said, they may have a shell there. If we go uh, to look at uh, the squid here, everything you see here, so this is the head foot. Uh, what you're seeing here is part of the fins. That's, what, that's the mantle. The visceral mass is underneath the mantle. All right, so these guys can be marine, freshwater, terrestrial, and also parasitic. All right. Let's move on to uh, arthropods. So arthropods includes the insects, crabs, spiders, millipedes, centipedes, ticks, horseshoe crabs, all those things. All right, uh, so these guys are coelomates. Uh, they have a segmented body with three distinct areas. So if we can move to the next, so right here, showing a lobster, uh, here showing an insect, you know, a grasshopper, all right? So they have a distinct head, they have a distinct thorax area, and they have an abdomen as well. Uh, and they have jointed paired appendages, and those come off of the thorax. All right, uh, these guys are, uh, are protosomes, uh, and they have a chitinous exoskeleton, which is a hard uh, protein carbohydrate complex. Uh, they can be freshwater, marine, terrestrial, and parasitic. All right, so this is showing a dust mite there. So looking at the uh, major groups here, uh, first are insects. Now insects uh, have three pairs of walking legs. Uh, the legs are located on the thorax, as I mentioned there, uh, and their life cycle can consist of separate life stages. 
So um, let's look at here. Uh, this is um, showing uh, an incomplete metamorphosis, and that's where the young and the adults look fairly similar. The adults have wings. Uh, and then others go through a major metamorphosis, and that's what we see with like uh, butterflies, moths, uh, even uh, bees and wasps and ants uh, have this major metamorphosis. Okay, so once again, uh, adults have wings or they've reduced those wings. Okay, uh, next are arachnids. So showing arachnids here. So these are spiders and scorpions, and these have four pairs of walking legs. Once again, the legs are located on the thorax. And they have specialized mouth parts for predation. And this is showing a cute little jumping spider there. Uh, I'm a big fan of jumping spiders. I like them a lot. Uh, so here's showing another jumping spider, cute little guy. Uh, you know, not so cute, Black Widow. Uh, here's a scorpion. Uh, so, all right. Uh, next uh, are um, the crustaceans. These are lobsters, crabs, crayfish, shrimp, sow bugs, uh, horseshoe crabs, and barnacles, as well as uh, pill bugs are also what we call roly-polies. These have many pairs of legs. Uh, they usually have five pairs of appendages that extend from the head as well. Uh, they're mostly aquatic. These are showing horseshoe crabs here. Uh, these are showing a barnacle. All right. So next are uh, centipedes. Uh, these are, have long segmented bodies and they have many pairs of legs. And these guys are predators here. Uh, these guys have one pair of legs per segment. Uh, and that's what we see with centipedes. Uh, next are, uh, so that's another centipede there. Uh, next are millipedes. Uh, millipedes have long segmented bodies as well. Uh, many pairs of legs. Uh, these guys are detritivores. They typically have two pairs of legs per segment. All right, so let's move on to echinoderms. Echinoderms are sea stars, sea urchins, sand dollars, and sea cucumbers. So sea star, sea urchin, sea cucumber, there's a sand dollar right there. Okay, uh, these guys are coelomates and they are radially symmetrical and they have a hard endoskeleton underneath a spiny skin. Uh, they are deuterostomes and they have a pentan uh, ten pentamerous body plan. So the pentamerous body plan is a five part. So you can see there's five parts there, five parts there. All right, so that's what you're going to see with them. Now their larvae are bilaterally symmetrical. Uh, their undersides are covered with these two feet, uh, and that helps them move and uh, get prey. So you can see here uh, this uh, sea star going after that clam. All right. Uh, these guys are all marine. So this is a sea urchin. You see those two feet sticking out. All right. Let's look at chordates. Chordates are mammals, fish, reptiles, birds, and amphibians. Um, uh, these guys are deuterostomes. Uh, they are bilaterally symmetrical. Uh, they have segmented coelomates uh, with a notochord, which we'll get to what a notochord is here in a minute. Uh, so let's just go ahead and look at, start the next section, which is phylum chordata, and looking at chordate hallmarks. So one of those hallmarks, so this is showing the hallmarks here, is a notochord. Uh, and this is a flexible rod-like structure that goes the length of the body and it's part of the endoskeleton, so our internal skeleton. Uh, and it is a place for muscle attachment. So when we look at uh, lancelot, lancelets and jawless fish, which we'll get to here in a little bit, uh, this is gonna persist throughout their life st uh, span. Uh, it's made out of cartilage. Uh, with jawed fish and tetrapods, tetrapods include amphibians, reptiles, birds, mammals, all right? Uh, it is only in development, uh, and the vertebrae are gonna form around that. All right. Next is dorsal. Uh, so is a dorsal tubular nerve cord. So there's our dorsal tubular ner nerve cord. So this is the brain and spinal cord. Now, not all chordates are going to have a brain, but they're all going to have a spinal cord. All right. Next are the pharyngeal slits or gill pouches. Uh, so these are perforated slit like openings uh, that lead uh, from the pharynx, which is the throat, to the outside of the body. So in fish, these are going to become gills, uh, but in uh, uh, amphibians, reptiles, birds, and mammals, these give rise to such things as our uh, eustachian tube, our middle ear cavity, our tonsils, and our thyroid gland. 
All right. Next is a post anal tail. Uh, they all have this. Uh, when we're talking about fish, used in mobility, uh, it helps uh, maintain balance in tetrapods. Uh, in humans, it becomes a vestigial organ. Uh, it's actually larger in us in our embryological stage.